The following piece is an excerpt from Professor Kianga Yamada Taylor's keynote address at Duke University's Dr. Martin Luther King commemoration on January 16, 2022. The piece reflects the author's views alone. It has been lightly edited for clarity. The full event can be found here. The King holiday is more than a time for reflection. It's really a time for provocation. So, I always like to say that that is the spirit within which I offer my comments, as a provocation to think more deeply about the issues that confront us as a society, but also what we do in response to them. In 1983, after years of lobbying by civil rights advocates and Coretta Scott King, Ronald Reagan, a sitting president but a political opponent of King during his lifetime, agreed to sign legislation turning King's birthday into a national holiday. At the time of King's murder in 1968, Reagan had made callous and racist statements that described King's death as a great tragedy that began when we began compromising with law and order and people started choosing which laws they'd break. Right-wing reactionaries had often reduced the Southern. Reagan ended his remarks in 1968 about King by denigrating the ideal of equality as outside the boundaries of the American dream saying, the American dream that we have nursed so long is not that every man be level with every other man but that every man may be free to become whatever God intended. But it was also a moment of tragedy, as the formal canonization of King allowed his complicated politics to be defamed and defouled, twisted into hollow pleas for peace, justice, equality, and color blindness. That was the trade-off. King could only be a national hero if he was stranded in 1963 at the Lincoln Memorial, in search of a world where his children would be judged by the content of their character and not the color of their skin, as he said in his I Have a Dream speech, entombed in a casket of idolatry and political, the elevation of the King holiday had become possible, even as Republicans wielded political control of Washington, because it could be used to defuse allegations of racism against the relatively newly minted Reagan administration. Reagan had garnered some high-profile black support when he ran for president in 1980. Black leaders had become exasperated with the stalled agenda of Democrat Jimmy Carter, 